Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making something that I hope is really yummy. It is called Cinnamon Swirl Sweet Potato Cheesecake. Now it is described as an intermediate recipe, which means it's not super easy, but it's not super hard. And it is described also as a sweet potato cheesecake hybrid with cinnamon chips on a graham cracker crust. Now I got this recipe from Hershey's because I had this package of cinnamon chips. I actually have two, so I have another one. Maybe we can make something with it sometime. But I had this package of cinnamon chips from Hershey's and I didn't know what to do with them. So I went around looking on, online for recipes that would use these cinnamon chips and I found this and it looked intriguing. Now, you know, we tried to make a we tried to make a cheesecake one time before and it didn't turn out too well because the recipe I was using, unbeknownst to me, was missing an ingredient. Um, and I've never made cheesecake, so I didn't know. I didn't realize it, you know. I don't know anything about cheesecake, really, except that it tastes good. I'd never made one, so, um, but it, it never set up properly. It, it stayed kind of runny. Hopefully, this one will turn out better. Um, it's, it doesn't have a ton of ingredients. Fortunately, most of it was stuff that I already had, so I didn't even have to really buy much. Um, all I had to buy were some graham cracker crumbs. These are from Keebler. And these are great because the consistency is perfect. I mean, you can make your own. You can smush up graham crackers if you want to. I like these. I think these are great. And there's more than enough here to do this and then have some left over. And I had to go buy some uh, sweet potatoes. Bruce's yams. Come to find out, um, I made a video in Walmart when we purchased these. This was the only brand of canned sweet potatoes that they had. So it was Bruce's or nothing. <laughs> You also need, um, well, let me just read the recipe to you, what you need. First of all, you need one and three quarters cups of graham cracker crumbs, whether you make them yourself or, or just get the box, a quarter cup of granulated sugar, a quarter cup or half a stick of butter or margarine, that's butter. You also need four packages of cream cheese softened. So this is one. I, I did actually have to buy this. I didn't have any cream cheese. Um, and they're nice and soft now. You also need one cup of packed light brown sugar, which fortunately I had some left over from another recipe. So I'm sure I have more than enough in there, but this is just a package of light brown sugar. Uh, you also need 15, one 15 ounce can of sweet potatoes. I couldn't remember how much I needed. Um, so I just went ahead and got the 29 ounce can. I guess I'll just have some left over. So you're gonna drain, it's like take 15 ounces. So it's gonna be roughly half of that can, drain it. So you wanna drain all the liquid off. Three eggs, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and then you're gonna need an entire 10 ounce package of these Hershey's Kitchens cinnamon chips and they're so good. They're good just to get a little handful and eat. They're really delicious. So and I'll put the, I'll put a link to the recipe in the description if you want to try it. Um, it's a black and white picture but I think it I think it looks good. It looks yummy. So we're gonna start working on putting all this together. We'll see how it goes. have here a little bowl. Isn't this cute? This is part of my little mixing bowl set that I got at an antique store. Aren't they cool? <laughs> have little flicks in them. I always like to show them off. Okay, now we have our recipe here. And the first step that you want to do, first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. After you do that, you want to combine your graham cracker crumbs granulated sugar and butter in your little bowl. This bowl may not be big enough, I don't know. Let me actually go grab one that's a little bit bigger. That, uh, that may not work. So now I get to show you the green one. Look at that. Oh, it's nice. So I have here one and three quarter cups of gra um, graham cracker crumbs. Oh, they smell so good. They really do. 
So one and three quarter cups of fat. The sugar, you're gonna have a quarter cup of sugar, which I have right here. This is gonna be the crust of the cheesecake. And a half a stick of butter, melted. That's gonna help hold everything together, we hope. Okay, now you wanna stir it up. Mix it all up. It's sticking to my spoon. starts to develop this clumpy, slightly little crumbly texture to it. I mean, I know it's crumbs, but little clusters of the crumbs start sticking together. You may hear some trucks rumbling by. They're replacing, they're redoing the sidewalk on the street just north of me and the street just south of me so I'm surrounded by work construction today <laughs> well destruction at the moment they're getting ready I think to rip up the old sidewalk okay and there's one guy out there in this big dump truck I think it's his first day on the job he keeps blowing the horn for no apparent reason <laughs> I don't know what that's about. It's really funny. He just keeps honking his little dump truck horn and hanging like Bob the Builder out there. Having a grand old time. Personally, I'm jealous. I'd like to go out there and drive a dump truck. Okay. We're just gonna dump it all in there. Now what we're gonna do, hopefully, is Scrape it out. We're gonna make, we're gonna cover the entire bottom of this lovely spring form pan that I have here. Um, I didn't measure it. You're supposed to use a nine inch spring form pan. I don't know, that's close enough. It's probably close to that. Now, my hands are clean. You wanna mash the crust and as you press on it you see how it kind of sticks together now you want to make sure you cover the whole bottom of the pan try to get it even if you can and go up the sides about an inch and a half so you're going to need to press it up against the sides too if you make a little hole in it you can just kind of mash it back in place gonna try to get some to go up the sides a little bit I'm trying to make it even or as even as I can in the corners it's kind of hard going up the sides just press on it you'll get little crumbs between your fingers it feels like sand <laughs> it probably tastes better than sand but that's what it feels like It doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to distribute it, you know, as, as evenly as you can. Okay. There. Now. We're done with this for now. We don't have to do anything with this at this point. So we're going to set this aside. Somewhere. Now, this step has a lot of mixing in it that involves an electric hand mixer. I'm not going to be doing that in here because it's really loud, but I'm going to show you the steps. 
the first thing we're going to do is take those four blocks of this softened cream cheese and put it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I'm going to add next. Boy, let me tell you, that is a lot of cream cheese. Look at that. <laughs> God, that is heavy. That is four, four eight ounce bricks of cream cheese. So we're going to take that and a cup of packed brown sugar. Just comes out in a chunk. Now what I'm going to have to do with this is I'm going to beat this with an electric hand mixer and we're going to mix that together. So we have to mix it until it's fluffy. So I'm going to go do that with my hand mixer and then we will come back and we will add, um, we'll do the sweet potatoes after that. Well, that was actually super easy. I wasn't sure how hard it would be to mix the cream cheese with that brown sugar, but um, my son said it looked like concrete. I think that's a bit harsh, um, but it was very, very easy. So it's nice and light and fluffy. So that is just the four bricks of <laughs> cream cheese and the packed cup of light brown sugar. That's all we have in here right now. But the next step, what we have to do now is mash up these little guys. Okay. I just grabbed a fork. I figured that they're not hard. I think they've been baked or something before they put them in the can. They bake them. They were in syrup, but I drained them. This is about half of that 29 ounce can. You're supposed to use a 15 ounce can. But I did not have the recipe with me, and I couldn't remember when I was at the store what size can I needed to buy. So I just have some extra. <laughs> you can make comments about the way it sounds. It's always very clever when y'all say the exact same thing every time. Okay. So we bring this back. Now this again is just our cream cheese and brown sugar. We're going to take our sweet potatoes and we're gonna add it to this cream cheese mixture right here. And again, I have to get the mixer out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go run it through the mixer again and we will see how it looks after we mix that in. Okay, well, I thought it would kind of change the color, but it really didn't. I mean, it looks basically the same. You have little bits of um, sweet potato in there now that you didn't have before. But otherwise, it might basically looks the same. Now what I have to do, I have my three eggs here. I'm going to beat these eggs into the mix one at a time. And after we do that, we'll come back and see how it looks. And then we're going to add the vanilla and the pumpkin pie spice. Oh wow, adding those three eggs. Look at it. Watch it wiggle and see it jiggle. Remember those Jello commercials? <laughs> it is definitely more runny now than it was. So now we're going to add in our teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. We're going to mix this in. It's a teaspoon. And then we need, get out of there. We need an entire tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now let's see if I have a tablespoon left in this bottle. Oh, I do for sure. Oh, it smells so good. So, I'm now going to mix in the vanilla and the pumpkin pie spice. And that will do it for this part of it anyway. So let's go ahead and mix that together. Okay, well, I just, I cannot tell you how good this smells. Once you add that cinnamon and that uh, pumpkin pie, that pumpkin pie spice, oh my gosh, once you turn on the mixer and you start mixing it up, oh my goodness, it smells fantastic. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit out of order on this recipe. I was just looking at it because the next step is to take the cinnamon chips and melt them in the microwave. But I think before we do that, we're going to take a little bit of this and add it to the bottom of the pan, which is part of the next step. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on to the next step and we're going to spoon about half of this mixture into the bottom of our pan. Because see then, so you're going to melt the chips 
and then you're going to put some of the mixture on top. Let me see. So you want to melt it. Okay, we want to save some of the mixture. We'll get to that in a minute. We want to put, okay, half of it in here. Let's see. As long as I don't drop this bowl, I will be doing all right. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, that smells so good. Look at that. We will be taking about three quarters of a cup of this mixture and mixing it into the melted chips. And it will give the chips, the melted chips, a pudding-like consistency. I don't know, I'd say that's about half. That's close enough. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Now I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I found this little bowl. I think this will work for the chips. So we have our 10 ounce. Well, I don't know though, because if I have to add let me confirm. I have to add three quarters of a cup of cream cheese in here. Ooh, I don't know that. You know what? That bowl may not be big enough. Let me go. Get, let me go get a bigger one. Okay, that's better. That's a little bit bigger. So we're going to take our chips, and they smell so good. They have such a lovely cinnamony smell. Look at them. How pretty they are. Now the first thing we're going to do is melt these little chips and to do that you want to heat them on medium heat in the microwave for a minute and then stir them and then if it's not enough to melt them you want to heat it on medium again in 15 second increments stirring between increments to make sure it's melted and then we're going to bring it back and we will add a little bit of the mix to it well, that took some doing there. I, I did it for a minute, and then I had to do three 15-minute increments on half, you know, medium power to get it to melt. But look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay. So now we want to add three quarters. This is three quarters of a cup of this mixture to it and stir it in. Get off. It's really sticky. <laughs> it's a very sticky mixture. Okay. And it says it will have a pudding like consistency. Yeah, it kind of does. Ooh, look how swirly it is. <laughs> I think the Hulk is over there working on that sidewalk. It sounds like they're slinging whole slabs of it around. Okay. Now, we've got half of the next, okay, the next step, we've already done this part. We have half of the cream cheese mixture in here already. So we want to spoon half of the cinnamon mixture over the top. Yeah, that's about half. Oops, I messed up. I can hear all y'all really good cooks just moaning at me right now. I don't get paid to do this, so I don't care. I make good money doing other stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's so soupy. Look at it. Ooh. Get off of there. Okay. Good enough. Okay. Swirl with a knife or a metal spatula. I think we basically already swirled it half to death just trying to get it on there. Look at what I did. We. <laughs> I 
think it's swirled. Or do they mean go, I don't care. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, now I want to top that with the remaining cream cheese mixture. Sorry. She left a lot in that bowl. Yeah, I'm probably going to scoop it out and eat it later. There's a method to my madness. All right. And then we're going to put the rest of this on top. I think I cooked it a little bit. I got it a little too hot and it's cooked. That's why the consistency is goopy. Nothing I can do about it now. We just keep going. It smells so incredibly good. I mean, it's just beautiful. Okay, there. Now, we have everything in there. I would say I'm supposed to swirl it to the outer edges of the pan. Whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I'm happy with it. Now, you're going to bake this for 60 to 70 minutes or until the center is just set. Cheesecakes are less likely to crack if baked in a water bath. And you're going to bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you want to remove it from the oven to a wire rack and let it cool at room temperature for an hour. And then you loosen the sides of the cheesecake from the pan by running a knife around the inside edge of the pan and then you remove the side of the pan. Cover it, refrigerate it for four hours or overnight. Good gracious, so it's gonna be a while before we can try it. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and bake it and uh, we will see how it looks after that. Oh my goodness, look at this, isn't it beautiful? Look at that. Now I did bake this in a water bath like it suggested have a few little cracks in it, but I mean, it, it smells so incredibly good. Look at that. It's beautiful. So now I have to release it from the spring form pan and pop it into the refrigerator for four hours. I think a, a minimum of four hours. Four hours or overnight, it said. So we're going to do that. There. You have to run a knife around. I just took a butter knife and went around like that. Just all the way around. And then you have to release the sides of the pan. So there's a little latch right here. This is a spring form pan. Just pop it open. did it look okay now we're going to refrigerate this sorry olive <laughs> olive bump the tripod we're gonna refrigerate this for four hours and then we get to cut into it and see how it tastes I'm looking forward to that well here we are much later I've lost my beautiful daylight it's now 
quite a bit later. This is basically taken all day. I mean, it's not the only thing I've done, but this cheesecake smells great and I think it's wonderful. But if you're looking for a quick dessert, this probably isn't it because you have to let it chill in the refrigerator. You have to let it cool to room t uh, at room temperature for an hour and then you have to refrigerate it for at least four hours. So it takes a little while and I set it on a plate and it's heavy. It's very heavy and it did crack a little bit on the top. I'm not worried about it. Um, it smells so good. It's very heavy, but then you have to remember we have four bricks of um, cream cheese in here along with all the other stuff. So, you know, it makes sense that it's, it's pretty dense. So I'm going to cut into this. I'm just going to, I don't want a lot. I'm just going to take a little selection of this to try right here. Okay. I got that cut. Look at that. Ooh, it, we do have a little bit of marbly. It kind of has a little marble. I don't want to turn it up too far, but a little bit of a marbly texture to it. Oh, it looks nice. And here's some of that graham cracker crust right here. So let's see. Oh, this is some of that cinnamon stuff. Just a big chunk of it right there. Let's see how this is. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's good. I actually made cheesecake and it didn't stay runny this time. Mm. It's very rich. I don't think I could eat much more than this. But it, oh my goodness, look at that. It's very good. You can taste the cinnamon the sweet potato you know something like this would be really good at thanksgiving like thanksgiving dinner something like this something a little different from the regular pie or whatever something like this would be fantastic and i can tell you um if you can't find the cinnamon chips you can order them online but it's expensive i found them at um publix so you can actually get them at publix with their other chips and things like that it's a lot cheaper than ordering them online because the shipping is ridiculous. Mmm. That, that is absolutely fantastic. So that is it. I feel really good that I was finally able to make a cheesecake. And it's really yummy. It, it, it's listed as an intermediate recipe, but... I didn't really think it was that hard. I mean, as long as you just follow the steps and mix it the way they say to mix it and refrigerate it and everything, I thought it was pretty easy. But that's it. Very rich, very good. I've never had a sweet potato cinnamon swirl cheesecake, but now I have, so it's a good day. So thank you so much for watching. Jack Nicholson duplicates here. Thank you so much in my totally appropriate shirt. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon.